Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Game Vortex coming to you from my mobile studio yet again. Some, like literally yesterday, I had a few beers at night, well not at night, in the evening when I was doing some work. And then when I was about to hit the sack at half past one, some news came out and about the Nintendo Switch. And this is exactly what I was waiting for. I told you the bad stuff will start to come out. So that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. I apologize that I have to do it in a car. I really wanted to do a proper video, but my wife called me and she asked me to go and pick her up uh, from my in-law's house, which is 150 kilometers away. And I just set off right now, so I have about an hour and a half to drive through the mountains here because everybody else got ill there. So I need to go and pick them up. Anyway, let's talk about Nintendo Switch. Now, there's a couple of sources came out with the leaked specs for the CPU, GPU combo and everything finally starting to fall together. Why the price is so cheap, $250 allegedly. And what can we expect? You can forget, I'll give you a hint, about any kind of third party games that you are playing right now on PS4 and Xbox One because there's no flipping chance that it's gonna run on this thing. Nintendo wasn't joking a couple of years ago when they actually said that they're out of the competition uh, when they compete in terms of horsepower, but still, still I actually want them to fuck, to give something to us that, that we can be confident in instead of outdated hardware and a cheap package, yes, but then, I don't know. Anyway, so the digital, digital foundry has been firing on all cylinders recently when they're talking about the PS4 Pro and etc, etc. So they're doing a lot of things and uh, they pointed out this thing. I've seen this document leaked a while ago. I mean, it wasn't really leaked on the internet, but I've seen it uh, from one of my sources about the specifications that the people, the developers in particular, were briefed uh, to produce their games. What do they have to aim for? And I did I actually thought that it was just bullshit. It wasn't real. Uh, but now it actually confirms pretty much. That was about six months ago. It was way before we even got the official pro uh, announcement about Nintendo Switch. Now, okay, let's talk about it. So, my fears were completely true. I told you that the Tegra X2 would have been absolutely nice and that would put it on par or even po more powerful than the PS4 and Xbox One. However, that chip is still not officially out and that would have been much more expensive for them. Now, Nintendo Switch is running a Tegra X1 chip. It's slightly modified and it's based on Maxwell architecture, not Pascal. So Nvidia pretty much, they didn't lie, but they, they misled people completely because if you go to their website and the press release that they've done when the Switch was announced, they're saying it is powered by our chip which is based on the same architecture as the world's top graphic cards. Now the top graphic cards nowadays, the new generation, is based on FinEd transistor Pascal architecture done using 16 nanometer technology production. So. This in particular includes the GeForce 10 series, the 1080, 1070, 1060, and also the mobile versions, which are exactly identical, just slightly lower clock speed. This thing on Switch is just an old version of X1. It's slightly modified. We don't know what modifications are, but what we do know by looking at the clock speeds of CPU and GPU is that this thing is running basically on the same old Maxwell architecture, which yes, Pascal also shares the Maxwell things that are quite identical, but there are some differences. And it also suggests the fact that this thing is produced using a 20 nanometer technology. Now, why am I upset about this? You're probably thinking 16 nanometers, 20 nanometers, what's the big deal? Well, there is quite a big deal to be honest. And if you listen to the Digital Foundry, they can explain it even better than me is that a lot of phones, for example, uh, switch to FinEd architecture, which is basically 3D transistors. Not only that it allows for a more efficient processor, it means that it can run at higher clock speeds, and it also is very, very nice when it comes to power consumption and performance, most importantly. The performance leap is quite big when they switch to the FinEd architecture, as well as uh, the power 
efficiency of the chip so that will all result not only in a better performance but also in a better battery life and a smaller form factor smaller voltage uh, less heat so on and so forth now 20 architecture nanometers that's not a finet that's still the old style transistors which basically pretty much everything nowadays is going to finet architecture samsung and apple and everybody else are jumping a van wagon because that's the way to keep shrinking the the size uh, of the transistors now this is not the worst part however the clock speeds now let's talk about clock speeds the x1 processor is also included in nvidia shield tablet and TV and also in the Chrome was it pixel pixel book or something like that right it's basically the Google's tablet that was the pixel tablet it's running on the Tegra X1 however this is where the things start to get a bit scary as a comparison let's use uh, the tablet because NX is essentially or switch is essentially a tablet so let's use a tablet as an example for comparison with the clock speeds First, we're talking about CPU. On the Pixel book, or Pixel, Pixel, whatever the fuck it's called, I apologize for the swearing, the Pixel thing is running the Tegra X1 at two gigahertz, so 2000 megahertz, right? Two gigahertz. Switch, on the other hand, is running it at one gigahertz. So that's 50% drop down, 50%. Now, what's even scarier is that this uh, frequency is not increased it's not increased at all when you dock it the only thing that increases is the GPU clock speed when you dock it's still 1 gigahertz 1 gigahertz or and 20 basically 10, 1020 so that's 50% efficiency drop down a clock speed from the Tegra X1 running and other pretty much uh, and that's a bit scary and the thing is why they cannot make it run faster in the docked mode is because they will screw the developers because that's pretty much a 50% game that means they will have to produce two different SKUs of the game one for the tablet mode one for this and that's not gonna work with the amount of memory and RAM and everything that they have so that's why they have to fix it at this position I guess why they couldn't do it at 2 gigahertz is because they were afraid that it's gonna uh, produce too much heat which is bullshit because you have NVIDIA Shield, NVIDIA Shield TV, and also you have the flipping uh, Pixel tablet running it without a fan or anything like that. So that's one thing. <clears throat> disappointed, very disappointed. And then what they what they also done is that the GPU part of the Tegra X1 is running at hold your horses. 760 something megahertz so not too bad but not much not much but that's not the worst part hold on to your seats this is the clock speed when the actual unit is docked when it's running in tablet mode the clock speed of the GPU drops to 350 megahertz it's insane it's laughable figures, honestly, even for a fucking mobile tablet. And you don't need to go out and defend this thing already. Thing is, the Nintendo will never come out and say this because just as Wii U, they never actually reveal the full specs because they're all about their own games, their own experiences, their own stuff. But for crying out loud, Nintendo, at least once, once, come out and put the top of the rain shit in there and just blow everyone out of the water and everybody must say damn look at what they did we should have done this as well they executed it perfectly now i know they want to get out on the market because there's already one after the reveal there's already clones and hybrid consoles starting to appear uh so they're probably afraid that somebody's gonna beat them to it to the market but fuck, like they never learn well that's the thing they never learn why? Yeah, they could have like kept it under wraps for a bit more, wait for the fucking Tegra X2 to come out, stick that thing in there, optimize it properly, and that's it. 
I'm afraid that it's not even going to deliver a teraflop of com this thing if they drop this CPU down. Oh yeah, back to GPU thing. So it's got four Cortex A56, a thing or something like that. Uh, basically, processing units on it. Now technically, this it's a high power processing unit. Now technically, it's got eight. It also has four lower power processing unit. But the thing is. In majority of devices, especially the Pixel Book, the four lower processing cores are deactivated. They're not used at all. So technically, it's a quad-core CPU, GPU combo. I think it's got 256 CUDA cores. Uh, they are the old Maxwell type cores, not the Pascal ones. So in general, what do we think? I think that you can forget about ports of the games that you're seeing right now on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Pro, obviously, and of course Xbox One. Whereas those keep jumping into the 4K territory and high performance, uh, high visual fidelity games, the Switch is going to be a niche machine for sure. I mean, I'll still get it because it's been a while since I had a Nintendo's machine. But when will it learn, like, I don't know, like... Why? Why? I just don't understand what's the reasoning behind it, Nintendo. Why can't you make something that... Can you imagine? Or maybe it's the power issue, maybe it's the battery life, but I think it's just they're afraid to charge a lot for the console, or they still blindly believe that their fanboys are going to support them. The thing is, they've lost their fanboys. When the Wii U came out, they lost, they alienated pretty much everyone. The only people that are left right now is a super hardcore, and there are not many, not enough to support the thing. Just look at the sales of the Wii U. And I'm telling you that, this is most likely their last attempt at the hardware. Because if this fails, they're fucked. They'll have to do something else. They'll just have to publish their software on other, uh, which I want to happen. To, can you imagine playing Mario and stuff on the PS4 and, and things like that, uh, or a Vita? I want this to happen, but at the same time, I don't want Nintendo to lose what they really are. This company that was there in my childhood, that gave me my first Famicom, my first console that my parents bought me. I mean, the nostalgia is there. I wouldn't mind paying $400 for it if it featured a more, much more powerful GPU-CPU combo. And I knew that I could get to play some kind of a shooter games or, or like action games that are coming out right now, Street Fighter V and things like that. Because this is like, it's embarrassing again, to be honest. I knew, I told you that everything was going great, but it's a Nintendo we're talking about. So, something is bound to go wrong, and it did. Anyway, I suggest you guys go and watch the video from Digital Foundry, uh, where they break it down. They do an amazing job. They're very informative. I like watching their videos, even though I usually take my information from many sources before I report it back to you. Uh, and I only talk about the things that I usually understand uh, myself. I mean, I'm an IT savvy guy, I read a lot, I work with the computers a lot. So yeah, let me know after watching this video, what do you think about the Switch now? Are you still excited? You might get the Skyrim if it will run properly, which I'm not sure it will, but that's an old game, that's a last gen game. So you will get that most likely but you can forget about anything else that is coming out right now uh, for the PS4 and apart from the indies and, and like smaller titles you know like Journey and Abzu and stuff so yeah let me know in the comments below what do you think about this whole situation and thank you very much for watching and supporting me uh, click the subscribe button below please uh, share the video if you like it comment uh, I really enjoy reading your comments I apologize, uh, somebody get back to me in general saying that I should swear less. I guess so, I mean, there's a lot of guys doing the... I can understand maybe that's the videos for the Pokemon Go, because Pokemons are usually associated mostly with the younger audiences. But, as far as I've seen a lot of YouTubers, you know, that are reporting on the game is all swearing like hell. Uh, but I'll try to keep it to the minimum, I can guarantee that. Okay, so... Thank you very much. I still have another 100 kilometers to go. And I'll see you all on the next episode of Game Vortex. Thank you for making my journey a little bit more interesting.